Hey, this is Rick Caselge from ExercisesForInjuries.com, and today I have another interview for you, a video interview, and we're going to kind of talk about you know, corrective exercise versus motor learning. So I have uh, Jim on the line or on the video screen, and we're going to kind of talk about correctives, corrective exercise, and motor learning. So starting off with things, Jim, I'll get you to introduce yourself to the viewers, listeners, and readers. Sure. Uh, well, my name is Jim Kilbasso. Um, I'm out in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, my, my name sounds a lot like the sausage, but with an O on the end. So that's kind of what people always assume. So I'll just put it out there before you even think of it. Um, I didn't even think of that. That's great. No, well, everybody else seems to. <laughs> uh, so I run a, a private uh, sports performance training center out in Detroit, and um, and I also have a couple of websites, my own blog, and then ultimatestrengthandconditioning.com. So uh, I, I like to write. I've written a couple of books and, on speed and agility training and strength and conditioning, and um, I'm glad that we're going to get to talk about some of this stuff. And I like interviewing people from Michigan because people in Michigan understand ice hockey. And you can have oh, a great yeah. conversation about ice hockey because I, I, I mean, I'm from Vancouver and I'm a fan of the Vancouver Canucks. And yeah. so it's always well, we have, <laughs> hockey in Detroit is huge. I, you may or may not know it being out there, but they call this place hockey town. Yeah. Because so many people play hockey and we've got lots of hockey guys and hockey, even hockey pros that they come in here. So. Yeah, hockey's big in, in Michigan, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, I mean, I know now, even in July, it's they, all they talk about in Vancouver is hockey, and yeah. Yeah. You know they're going to retire Pavel Bure's number, supposedly in the fall here, so everyone's excited about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll get, we'll get to the topic that, that we're going to talk about. So uh, let's, you know, what, maybe we'll start initially when it comes to, like, your athlete, and like we're going to talk about corrective exercise and and motor, motor patterns and motor control but maybe we'll take a step back when it comes to like how do you end up assessing your athletes well i may do it a slightly differently than than some other people do um i run them through a lot of different things uh but one of the big big uh assessment tools that i use is just my eyes watching an athlete move and we do some things that are similar like to the fms uh we do some objective tests like running 40s and agility drills and vertical jumps and strength tests and all that but a big part of the assessment is just kind of evaluating um the movement quality that a person has and you know there's really not anything that that so far that i can lay out and like write out and say this is all you're looking for because Everybody is going to move differently, and everybody has different movement um, goals and needs depending on their on their sport and on their position. So, um, so years ago when I started talking or writing about movement training, I was actually talking about moving, like running and jumping and cutting and turning and twisting and all the things that we do out on the field. And then movement kind of turned into um, a set of tests, I guess is. That's kind of my opinion of it. Um, you know, overhead squat, the step over, you know, these things. And I'm not saying that they're bad. Uh, it's just I look at movement in a in a larger kind of um, kind of framework. So I will kind of analyze the way a person's running, and from there, um, I'll see if you know, it, it, are they are they not running properly, for example, because they have poor motor learning or poor, poor motor development, um, motor skills, or is there something limiting them that a corrective exercise needs to, you know, needs to address? So, um, for example, uh, let's say somebody is not getting their knees up high enough when they're sprinting, um, you know, is the problem a motor learning problem and they just don't know how to run properly and it doesn't feel right? or do they have something inhibiting them and blocking them? So, um, you know, after we do kind of the movement assessment, we'll go into more of the joint by joint approach to see if it's a, if that's what's limiting them or is it just they learned wrong. 
Okay. Okay, I like that. I like that. So then you end up... You know, there isn't like one assessment tool that you end up using. It ends up being multiple things. It might be uh, you're looking at the specific joint when it comes to an assessment. It might be a specific test that has, you know, grading within it. And then it's just kind of utilizing your eyes to see if they're, they're moving properly and then you have the proper motor learning to do that movement correctly. Yeah, exactly. And, and what I found uh, in my experience is that a lot of the times it's not really a, a corrective exercise that needs to be addressed first. It's the movement quality. Um, a lot of people have just over the course of years learned how to move wrong and those motor patterns get ingrained in their body so that when you ask someone who doesn't run with their knees up high enough to get their knees up, it feels really bad, it feels very awkward to them. So they almost resist or fight doing it because it feels so bad. Um, but then if I ask, if I say, well, can you stand on the ground and just lift your knee up? Well, they can, if they can get it up and they can get themselves into that position, um, then m most likely uh, I've realized, well, it's not, it's not something that a corrective exercise needs to do or needs to, you know, to address because they can actually perform the movement. They're just not doing it. Um, when, when it comes time to perform. Okay. And then, so then looking at, so you've got that and you, you kind of make a decision that it needs to be like a, a corrective exercise focus or a, a motor learning focus. What would end up being the, the next step? And let's go with the example that you kind of talked about, about, you know, high knees or bringing the knees high enough, you know, when they're running or sprinting, what would be an example when it came to the corrective exercise that you might do? in order to address something that's come up in your assessment or a motor learning focus uh, based upon something that's come up in the assessment? Sure, so in, again, in that example of somebody who's maybe not getting their knees up high enough or they're, uh, they're not getting enough separation between their limbs when they're sprinting, um, what we'll maybe do is first kind of check their, their hip flexor flexibility to see if they're able to get into that that uh, the open position when you know when somebody's running, basically, you know, like knee to knee opening. Um, maybe check their hip flexor strength and, and abdominal strength. Can they get their knee up into that position, or is it something that's just you know it's not really not really strong enough to get up there? Um, it could be a postural type of thing. Maybe they have a super exaggerated anterior pelvic tilt and it's uh, limiting their knee drive because uh, you know there's something blocking it because they're, they're tilting their pelvis too much. Okay. So that may be where we say, okay, well, um, we're gonna have to increase flexibility or mobility here or we're gonna have to change your posture um, or we're gonna have to do some strengthening. And so that's where maybe the corrective would come into play. Um, if it's if it's not one of those things and they seem to be able to, you know, to physically get themselves into those positions, then we start doing more, uh, you know, we call it coaching at that point. So we're, we're teaching the person how to move. So we would be doing um, sprint type of mechanics drills. We would do wall drills where they can get their knees into the position that they should be, but kind of at a slower, uh, at a slower pace and, we can stop them on every single stride and, and let them feel what it's supposed to be like. Um, we do a lot of treadmill sprints, um, incline treadmill sprints in front of a mirror so that the athlete in the middle of the sprint can actually hear us giving them the feedback on whether or not, in this example, they're getting their knee high enough. Um, and then they can they can hear us saying, saying it in the middle of the sprint. They can look in the mirror and see what it looks like and then when they make the correction and start getting their knees up they'll hear us immediately say yes yes that's exactly what it should be and then they can see it in the mirror so they can start seeing feeling hearing all while they're doing it um, basically we're trying to trick their nervous system into feeling like this is what's right you know this is what you want it to feel like even though it feels completely awkward that's the right thing and then from there it's just a matter of 
continuous coaching and doing rep after rep of that kind of that kind of thing. Okay, and then look- a pretty simple version of it. Yeah, yeah. And then looking at like where would you within an athlete's program, where would you include the correctives or the motor learning exercises? Um, well, that's a good question. Usually the correctives we will do um, real close to the beginning of the workout. Um, sometimes we'll throw them in at the end. Uh, we, we typically, for, for most of the athletes that come and work with us, we're spending a lot of time working on speed and agility. So we'll start out the session with a warm-up, and that warm-up may include some correctives. When we get into the speed and agility section, it's more of the motor learning stuff. And then we usually go into a strength training portion um, of the workout, and that's oftentimes where the correctives are kind of installed is as part of their strength training um, program. And it may be like in between exercises, they may go and do a, a specific corrective in between exercises. Yeah, that's been a more, that's been a, uh, probably a trend in the last year or two that I think they call them fillers. So instead yeah. of, instead of that walk between sets to the drinking fountain, it's like do something that uh, right. ends up helping with, with your goal. It might be performance. Yeah. It might be something else just sitting. And sometimes it can be a corrective or, or it can be another goal that you're kind of focusing in on. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Okay. And then, I mean, that ends up being all of my questions. Now, is there any like l- last minute tip that you want to end up uh, giving the readers, listeners, or viewers? Sure. Well, you know, something that always kind of sticks out in my mind is, um, is what is the goal of this person or this athlete that you're working with? And are you actually helping them as quickly and efficiently as possible to get towards that goal? And, uh, you know, for us, we'll have athletes who will come in and they want to be better basketball players or better soccer players or better football players. And yes, they, they do need to get stronger and they may need some correctives and they may need work on sprinting mechanics, but we also have to eventually be able to integrate real sport type of movement into what they're doing. So for for example, if I'm working on speed with a football receiver, uh, American football receiver, um, he may have a couple of corrective exercises, maybe the hip flexibility thing. He may need work on specific uh, speed type of mechanics and, and working on um, sprinting and acceleration mechanics. But then at some point, we need to kind of integrate some of his routes um, and have him learn how, okay, this is how you're going to use it in a game. So you have to be able to run, uh, you know, a 10-yard swing or a 5-yard hitch or whatever. And I'm not necessarily a football coach, but we have to allow that athlete to perform the movement in that kind of environment. And it's the same way with basketball. If we're working on acceleration mechanics with a basketball player, you know, we want them to pretend like they're just getting a rebound. They outlet you know, there's an outlet pass, and then they have to get down the court. Or with a soccer player, um, or with a soccer player, they might have to, you know, kick a ball and then, you know, go go into a run or, or something. So we're doing stuff that's actually on the field. Okay, excellent, excellent. So then, Jim, where can people get more information about you? All right. Well, there's a couple places that, that they can go. Um, my website, Ultimate Strength and Conditioning. Uh, for strength and conditioning it's got hundreds of articles and videos and interviews on there and then uh, my blog which is just jimkilbasso.com um, I, I talk a lot about speed and agility on there but I also get kind of more into the business of sports performance so anybody that uh, is watching this that's in the sports performance business um, they, they may want to check that out too awesome so thank you very much Jim And thank you very much, Exercises for Injuries viewers, readers, and listeners. This is Rick Caseldra with another interview for you. And make sure you swing by exercisesforinjuries.com. There's a good chance that I have an injury article or video for you. So make sure you put in your injury or pain in the search box. 
I'm quite sure that I have a video or an article for you. The second thing is, if you're watching this on YouTube, head up above, hit subscribe. What that'll do is, every couple days you'll end up getting a video like this, an interview video, or um, a video on myself chatting about injury or pain, or an interview that I do with uh, one of my friends when it relates to health and fitness. Now lastly, make sure you head down below and hit like or leave myself or Jim a comment and we'll get back to you. So this is Rick Caselge from Vancouver, Canada and Jim from Detroit, Michigan saying take care and bye-bye.